Good day everyone, we are the Group 9 reporters. So before we start to tackle our, um, our topic, um, we would like to introduce ourselves. I am Christine Ipanto. And I am Jimari P. Zamora. And I am Jude Kailoy. And I am Ben Stendido. So, Chapter 10, Critical Evolution and Promotion of Local and Oral History. So, in the modern society, a lot of thinking concentrates, feature huge and famous museums find their legitimization in the number of people visiting them. But what could legitimize the existence of the small and not very famous ones? So, museum has a big role to um, play in the process of creation of social identity. So another very important role is education. So a museum nowadays is only an institution responsible for cultural activity, um, organizing concerts and exhibitions. Not only allows people to experience the culture, but also creates cultural background of their local society. So, um, these are ex the example of museums in the Philippines. So first we have um, the Aguinaldo Shrine. So, it is a national shrine of the Philippines located in Kauit, Cavite, in the Philippines. So, President Aguinaldo greatly enlarged his home from 1919 to 1921, transforming it into a monument to flag and country. So, kanang, nowadays, it is known as Aran Kalayan or Independence Day, it's a national holiday. The Philippine flag is the Philippine flag is raised by here at the top of the government officials on June 12 each year. So the house is now a museum. So the shrine, the essential of Emilio Aguinaldo, officially the first president of the Philippines, the only president of the first Philippine Republic. The house was built in 1845, made from wood and thatch, and reconstructed in 1849. So here Aguinaldo was born on March 20, 1862, 1869. On June 12, 1898, the independence from Spain was proclaimed from the windows of the Grand Hall. The Declaration of the Philippine Independence was read by its author, Ambrosio Rianzares Bautista. The, the, so the Declaration of Independence was ratified by the Malolos Congress on September 21, 1898. Then, Aguinaldo died on February 6. 1964 at the age of nine, of 94 at the Veterans Memorial Medical Center in Quezon City. So the same year, the government declared the mansion as a national shrine on June 18 through Republic Act of 4039, signed by President Diosdado Macapagal. So next museum is um, Ferdinand E. Marcos for this residential center. So this is the museum situated in Batao, Ilocos Norte, dedicated to former, former Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos, which also hosts the cenotaph of the former president. So this The museum shows memorabilia of the late president from the stint in the armed forces down to his presidency. So the large cenotaph, which contains the glass and case coffin in which the widely believed and bound body of Marcos was on public display shortly after his re remain were brought in Ilocos Norte from the United States in 1993 until his body was re-entered at the Hero Cemetery in Taguig on November 18, 2016. So a wax replica of Marcos remains to be displayed inside the glass coffin. So next... Um, museum, we have the Oitankoy Santa's House, also known as the Museum of the Woman at Malolos. So it is an early 20th century Bainaba structure along Kitria Street in Rangay, Santo Nino, in the city of Malolos, Bulacan, in the Republic of the Philippines. So, the home belonged to Paulina Santos, a propietorio and cabeza de Barangay, and Alberta Oitankoy Santos, who was the leader of the Malolos of the women of Malolos and is revered for her contributions to Philippine women's rights. So the house was built and complete in 1914 after the original 1890 structure was destroyed by a fire in 1910. The Itankoy Santos house is currently owned by Josefa Santos, Ibadja, Ibadja and Verde Santos Herrera, granddaughters of Paulo Santos and Alberta Itankoy Santos, and is under the care of the nun 
non-profit organization, the woman, the Women of Malas Foundation. So the museum <coughs> lost temporarily on June, on January 18, 2017, and on March 2017, Herrera reopened the museum with a newly furnished and restored interior, along with world-class preservation unit. So next museum is we have Rizal Shrine. So it is a reproduction of the original two stories, Spanish colonial style house in Calamba, Laguna, where Jose Rizal was born on June 19, 1861. Rizal is regarded as one of the greatest national heroes of the Philippines. So the house is designated as National Shrine Level 1 by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. It is located along Mercado Street and Rizal Street in Glambas Poblacion 5 and is and is enclosed proximity to St. John the Baptist Parish Church and the City College of Calamba Rizal's father, Francisco Mercado. Took two years to build the original Rizal ancestral house. So, the Spanish authorities confiscated the house in 1891. Pasiano Rizal, brother of Jose Rizal, reoccupied the house during the Philippine Revolution, but lost it again to the to the friars. It was so it was Subsequently sold, destroyed in World War II, and eventually demolished, the government bought what remained of the Rizal House for 24000 only. So in 1949, President Elpidio Quirino passed Executive Order Number 145, facilitating reconstruction of the house. Filipino school children, children provide most of the funding for the project, while one F. Nakfield served as a supervising architect, staying true to the original home. So on June 19, 1950, the newly built home was inaugurated and now serves as a repository for results memorabilia. During the Senatory of the Philippine Independence in 1998, the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, in cooperation with the National Centennial Commission, decided that Rizal Shrine should focus specifically on his childhood. So, that. so next is the culture of the Philippines. Philippine culture comprises a blend of traditional Filipino and Spanish Catholic traditions with influences from America and other parts of Asia. So, culture, the culture of the Philippines is the combination of culture of the East and West. So, Filipino, Filipino identity was born at the same time as its creation mainly from its pre-colonial culture that merged with the influence of the colonizer and Chinese trader that melted and evolved to its own unique classical Filipino. So, ang kultura sa Pilipinas kay kombinasyon sa kultura sa East and West. Naasay sa goal kombinasyon sa Amerika o laing party sa Asia na evolved dari ang pre-colonial culture kung diin ang influensya sa colonizer or mananakop og mga Chinese traders at ang nadap ay I, I mean na uh, impluensyahan tag mga Pinoy sa mga Spanish America o Chinese so next is in pre colonial times it was divided a set of nation islands and tribes being ruled by their own specific social kings chiefs chief things lakans rahas datos and sultans so so dito nga tunga ang mga ang mga bansa isla og tribo ug din gipamalaan sa isig ka mamuno like king chieftains lakans rahas datos and sultans so next every nation has its own identity and some are even part of larger empire outside of the modern day map of what is now the philippine was created so during the spanish colonization the modern day chinese filipino signature mark on what is now the philippine was created so pag abot sa colonial sa isla mao ang pagsugod sa gitawag nga modernong Pilipinas. So kato nga time ang katong mga naghayusang mga isla known as the Philippines was created. So the Philippines was first settled by Negritos. Today, although few in numbers that perceive a very traditional way of life and culture. So after that, the Austronesians arrived on the archipelago. The Austronesians engaged in trading with other Austronesians particularly in the neighboring nation of Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei. They also traded with the mainland Southeast Asia as well as Japan, Korea, China, and India, con con subcontinent, and Arabia. So next is the Spanish 
empowered the gradually colonized the islands between the 16th and 19th centuries. Batanes is being one of the last place to be colonized in the mid 1800s. After more than three centuries of colonization, it Roman Catholicism is spread throughout the archipelago and influenced the religion of the native Philippine native people. After being colonized by Spain, the Philippines became a U.S. territory for almost 50 years. Influence from the United States is manifested in the wide of use of English language, media, and in the modern culture and clothing of recent days. So, ang na-influence siya sa Amerika na to is kanang magamit og English language. So, next is architecture. Architecture being a colony of the first Spanish Empire for almost 300 years, the Spaniards introduced European colonial architecture to the Philippines. So, the introduction of Christianity brought by <coughs> European churches and architecture, which subsequently became the center of most towns and cities in the nation. So, the Spaniards also introduced stones and rocks as housing their existing architecture and forms of hybrid mix architecture only in exclusive to the Philippines. So, Filipino colonial, colonial architecture can be still be seen in centuries-old buildings such as uh, Filipino Baroque, churches, bahay na bato, houses, schools, or convents, government buildings around the nation. So, the best, collect the best collection of Spanish colonial era, era architecture can be found in the wild city of Intramuros in Manila and in the historic town of Bigan. So, the colonial Era churches are also also in the best example and legacies of Spanish bar Spanish Baroque architecture called earthquake Baroque, which are only found in the Philippines. So next is the Bahay Kubo. Bahay Kubo was the common form of housing among the native Filipinos. So it cart by use of simple materials such as bamboo and coconut as the main source of wood. So, ang iigamit sa ato, which is the kogon grass, tipa palm, leaves, and coconut fronts. Then, the architecture of their indigenous people may be characterized by an angular wooden roofs, bamboo, in place of leafy touching and ornate wooden carving. So, the bahay na bato architecture are a uh, variant of Nipa Hut or Bahay Kubo that emerged during the colonial era. So next is the Kalesa. Kalesa is a traditional Philippine urban transportation in the front of, in the front of Manila Cathedral and Trans. So there have been proposals to establish a policy where each municipality and city will have an ordinance mandating all constructions and reconstructions within such within such ter territory to be inclined with the municipality of city architecture. So, landscaping styles to preserve, preserve and conserve the country's drying her heritage sites which have been demolished one at a time in a past phase due to urbanization, culturally irresponsible development and lack of townscape architectural vision. So, the proposal advocates for the usage and rate for Reputation of indigenous, colonial, and modern architecture and landscaping styles are prevalent or used to be prevalent in a given city of municipality. The proposal that aims to be poster a renaissance in the Philippines landscaping and landscaping, especially in the rural rural areas, which can easily be transformed into a new architectural heritage towns within a 50 year time frame. Many Philippine, many Philippine based architecture and engineering experts lack of the sense of preserving heritage townscape, such as the case in Manila where business proposals to construct structures that are not that are not inclined. Furthermore, the singular architectural proposal has yet to be manifested into an actual policy due to the lack of a depart, department of culture. Only the city of Bigan has passed such as ordinance which lead to it declaration as UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1999. So in 
2016, Sen Senator Laurent Legarda filed a bill establishing the Department of Culture. The bill was introduced in the Senate in January 2017 and it's expected to be passed into a law in late 2018 or early 2019. So the bill is backed by an other senator from different political parties, namely Bam Aquino, Nancy Binay, Francis Escudero, Juan Zubere, Joseph Hercito, Joel Villanueva, Sherwin Catachlian, Riza Contiveros, and Zune Agara. Their counterpart bills that aims to establish a Department of Culture has also been filed in the House of Representatives, authored by Christopher D. Binay. Christopher D. Venencia, Evelena Escudero, and Jose Antonio C. Albador. So next is religion. The Philippine is one of the two predominantly Roman Catholic nations in Asia Pacific. So the Philippine is one of the like ang so sa pag abut sa kawandai sa mga Spanish dere na Diri sa Pilipinas, dito na imo ang religion which is ang Roman Catholic. Halos sa tanang populasyon kay ang religion kay Catholic. So, from the census in 2014, Christianity consisted of about 90.0.7% of population and largely percent throughout the nation. So, while Islam is comprises of for about 5.57% of the total population and it's mostly concentrated in southwestern Mindanao, the Sulu Archipelago, and the southwestern Palawan. So, the Sulu Archipelago and southwestern Palawan, those who are reported others are more com composed 4.37% of the total population of the nation. So, before the arrival of Spaniards and the introduction of Roman Catholic, Catholicism, Catholicism and Western culture in the 16th century, so the indigenous Austronesian peoples of what is called now the Philippines. So next is the visual arts. Early Philippine painting can be found in a red slip design embellish on the ritual pottery of the Philippines such as the unclaimed Manonggol jar. Evidence of Philippine pottery making date as early as 6000 BC has been found in Sanga Sanga Cave, Sulu, and Cagayan, Lorente. So, kanina yung pottery kay kanang mura ni siya, kanang hulmahan na niya. Pottery is a da is pottery is the process and the product of forming vessels and other objects with clay and other raw materials which are fired at high temperatures to give them a hard and durable form so further evidence of painting is manifested in the tattoo tradition of early filipinos whom the portuguese explorer referred to as pintados or the painted people so let us a figure out Figueras is a genre of painting pioneered pian by Filipino painter Jose Honorato Luzano. So, si Kuande Kani, si Jose Honorato Luzano by, is a Filipino painter born in Kuan, Manila. Filipino began creating painting in the European tradition during 17th century Spanish period. So, the Earliest of this painting were church, frescoes, religious imagery, Im imagery from biblical resources as well as engraving sculpture, lithographs featuring Christian icons and European jubilee. Early modernist painters such as the Hagen Hansen, Hagen Hansen was associated with the religious and secular painting. The art of Lorenzo Migueleto and Alaya Espanol shown as a trend of polit political statement. The first American national artist, which is the Jorgen D. C. Pasqua, used post-modernism moderi to produce paintings that illustrated Philippines culture, nature, and harmony. See, Odd Arthur Hansen, 
popularly known as Asama ng Makabayan Pintor or the Father of Patriotic Faith, gained recognition. Old Arthur Hansen, he uses his own hair to make his own paint brushes and sign his painting using his own blood on the right side corner. So, ang i nag ang yung gam nagkimo siya yung own nga paint brush gamit ang yung koan buhok. Then gigamit niya ang yung dugo pag perma. He developed his own style without professional training or guidance from professional. Next, next is the indigenous art. The ethnic people are known for their faith wooden, wooden fabrics. The binacle is a blanket, which future design, which future design that incorporates optical illusions. So, other parts of highlands in the Cordillera re region, or in a local term, Kalgorotan displays their art and tattooing weaving bags like the sa sangye or sangye, a traditional backpack and a carving woods. So, some indigenous materials are also used as a medium in different kinds of artwork, especially in painting by Eleto Circa. Eleto Circa, a, a folk artist of Pantabangan and a pioneer for using indigenous materials, natural raw, raw materials including human blood, human blood. So, many Filipino painters were influenced by this and started using materials such as extract from onion, tomato, tuba, coffee, rust, molasses, and other materials available anywhere as paint. So, the Luman people of Mindanao, such as the Dilaan, Mandaya, Mansaka, and Tibuli are skilled in the art of dyeing abaca fiber. So, kanina ang Abaca is a plant closely closely related to bananas and its leaves are used to make fiber known as a manila hemp. So fiber is dyed by a met method called ikat ikat fiber. Ay ikat. So ikat fiber are wood woven into cloth with geometric patterns depicting human arrival at uh, animal and plants theme. So kut kut is a technique technique combining ancient oriental of European art process, considered lost art and highly collectible art form. So, very few known art pieces ex existed today. The technique was practiced by the indigenous people of Samar Islands between early 1600 and late 1800 AD. It is an ecutic Philippine art form based on early century techniques. So, the merging of the ancient styles produce a unique art, unique artwork, artwork characterized by delicate swirling interwoven lines, multi-layered texture, and illusion of three-dimensional space. So next is the uh, performing arts. So. So, uh, kaning, kaning performing arts is a uh, Philippine performing arts have its roots in the indigenous practice of rituals. It is believed that the rituals of early Filipino ancestors is the very origins of theater arts in the country. So, one of the performing arts is the kanang dance. So, dance is dance must be performed for an audience in order to be classified as a performing art. An audience is a group of spectators or listeners, especially especially at a public public event such as at a concert or play. Philip, uh, Philippine folk dances include the tinikling and carinosa. Uh, in the southern part of Mindanao, singkil is a popular dance showcasing the story of a prince and princess in the forest. Kaning kaning singkil is kanang konisya kanang bamboo poles are arranged in a kalaganing tic tac toe pattern ano magdulo mo tic tac toe ba and in which in which the dancers uh 
exploit every position of these clashing holes. Next is uh, next is the music. The early music of the Philippines featured mixtures of indigenous Islamic and a variety of Asian sounds that flourished before the European and American colonization in the 16th and 20th centuries. And the modern day music features several styles. Most music gen genres are contemporary such as Filipino rock, Filipino hip hop, and other musical styles. So, ang, ang kanang example ay niya is ang um, harana or serenade. Muna siya example sa early music sa Philippines. Ang kanang Filipino played a variety of musical instruments including including flutes, guitar, ukulele, violin, trumpets, and drums. They performed songs and dances to celebrate the festive occasions. By the, by the 21st century, many of the folk songs and dances have remained intact throughout the Philippines. Some of the groups that perform these folk songs and dances are the Bayanihan, uh, Filipin Filipiniscas, Barangay Barrio, Hairaya, the Kara Karilagan Ensemble, and groups associated with the groups associated with the Guilds of Manila and Fort Santiago Theaters. Modern day, oh, okay, so, so next is the uh, literature. Literature, literature. The, the Philippine literature is a diverse and rich group of work that has evolved throughout the centuries. It had started with traditional folk tales and legends made by the ancient Filipinos before the Spanish colonization. But the main themes of Philippine literature focuses on the country's pre-colonial cultural traditions and the socio-political uh, socio histories and its, of its colonial and contemporary traditions. The literature of the Philippines illustrates the prehistory and European colonial legacy of the Philippines. <coughs> Written in both indigenous and Hispanic writing system, most of the traditional literatures of the Philippines were prior were written were written during the Spanish period while being preserved orally prior to the Spanish colonization. Philippine literature is written in Spanish, English, or any indigenous Philippine languages. Some of the well-known work of literature will, were created from the 17th to 19th century. One of these, the famous, uh, famous works of famous epic about a uh, about an a uh, magical bird was the Ibong Adarna, which was claimed to be written by Jose de la Cruz or Hussein Cecil. And another one is that Francisco Balagtas is one of the country's prominent Filipino poets. He is named as one of the greatest Filipino literary laureates for his contribution in the Philippine li literature. His greater work, the uh, Florenti at Laura, is considered at hi as his greatest work and one of the masterpieces of Philippine literature. Balagtas wrote the uh, epic during his imprisonment. Jose Rizal, the national hero of the country, wrote the uh, novels, the novels Nolimi Tangeri and uh, El Filibusterismo, also known as the Reign also, no, also known as the Reign of Greed. There have been proposals to revive all the indigenous ethnic scripts or suyat in the Philippines where the ethnic script of the ethnic majority of the student population shall be taught in public and private schools. Um, if the ethnic majority is Hanunu Mangyan, then the script that will be taught is the Hanunu and so on. Next is the uh, cinema and uh, media. So, the formative years of Philippine cinema starting from the 1870s were a time of discovery of film as a new medium of expressing artworks. The artists, the scripts and characterizations in film came came from popular theater shows they uh, shows and Philippine literature. The 
The advent of the cinema of the Philippines can be traced back to the early days of filmmaking in 1897 when a Spanish theater owner uh, screened Im imported moving pictures. So, muna siya ang cinema, muna siya ron. In the 1940, the Philippine cinema brought the uh, consciousness of reality in its film industry. National Nationalistic films became popular and the movie themes consisting primarily of war and heroism and proved to be successful with Philippine audiences. So, muni siya si Mela del Sol. So, so Clarita Villarba Rivera, better known as her screen name, Mela del Sol was a she was a Filipina actress, entrepreneur, and phila philanthropist. She starred in one of the earliest Filipino movies, Ang Makapal ng Mukha, in 1939, along with Fernando Poe Sr. So, the 1950s saw the first golden age of Philippine cinema with the emergence of more artistic and mature films and significant improvement in cinematic techniques among filmmakers. The studio system produced frenetic activity in the Philippine film industry as many films were made annually and several local talents started to gain recognition abroad. The, the 1970s and 1980s were considered turbulent years for the Philippine film industry, bringing both positive and negative changes. The film in this period dealt, dealt more dealt with more serious topics following the martial law and era. In, addi in addition, action, western, drama, adult, and comedy films were developed further in picture quality, sound, and writing. The Philippines, being one of the Asia's fil earliest film industry producers, remains undisputed in terms of the highest level of theater admission in uh, Asia. So, let's move on to the, let's move on to the cuisine. So the the Spanish the Spanish colonizers and friars in the 16th century brought with them produce from the Americas such as the chili papers, tomatoes, corns, uh, potatoes, and method of sauteing with garlic and onions. A typical um, and audience eating eating out is a favorite Filipino pastime. Mogine paborito sa mga noiti or pinois. Uh, a typical Pinoy diet consists of most six meals a day. Breakfast, snacks, lunch, snacks, dinner, and again a midnight snack. Midnight snack before going to sleep. Uh, kanang, kanang rice is a staple of Filipino diet and is usually eaten together with other dishes. Filipinos regularly use spoons together with forks and knives. Some also eat with their hands, especially in their informal settings. And also, Filipinos use chopsticks when eating seafood. Rice, corn, and popular dishes such as adobo. It is a, adobo is a, a meat stew made from either pork or chicken. Uh, and then lumpia. Lumpia is a meat or vegetable roast. Then pancit is a noodle dish. And lechon baboy. A little bit is a roasted pig are served on plates. So Filipinos cook a variety of foods influenced by by of main Indian Chinese influences indigenous ingredients. So example ni is ang kanang lapas bachoy. So kaning lapas bachoy is a noodle soup made with pork organs, crushed pork, cracklings, chicken stock and beef loin. Other popular dishes bought from Southeast Asian and Spanish influences include afritada, asado, chorizo, empanadas, mani, it is a roasted peanuts, paxil, fish or pork cooked in vinegar and water with some spices like garlic and pepper, pan de sal, bread of salt, pescado, frito, fried or grilled fish, sisig, torta, is an it is an omelet then kare kare it's an oxtail stew kilawin pinakbet pinapaitan and sinigang some delicacies of by some filipinos may seem unappetizing 
to the Western palate, including balut. A first uh, it is a fer fertilized duckling inside longaniza and dinuguan. A popular snacks in uh, dessert and dessert such as chicharron, halo halo, ice cream, ice. Halo halo, it is a crushed ice with evaporated milk, evaporated milk, flan, sliced tropical fruit, and sweet beans. Puto, bibingka, ensaimada, and pulveron are are usually eaten outside with three main meals. Popular Philippine beverages include San Miguel beer. Tandoy rum, coconut, arak, and tuba. Every province has its own specialty, specialty and taste in taste and tastes vary in each region. In in Bicon, for example, kanang foods are generally spicier than elsewhere in the Philippines. Patis, suka, toyo, baguong, and banana ketchup are the most common condiments found in the Filipino homes and restaurants. Next is the uh, education. Education in the Philippines has been influenced Western and Eastern ideology and philosophy in from the United States, Spain, and its neighboring Asian countries. Philippine students enter, enter public school at about age four, starting from the nursery school up to the kindergarten. At about seven years of age, they graduate. Since so, uh, students enter the elementary school, Six to, six to nine years, this includes the seven, grade 7 to grade 10 as junior high school and then after they graduate. Since the uh, Philippines has already implemented the K-12 systems, students will enter the senior high school. It is a, a two-year two course to be able to prepare college life with their chosen tracks such as the ABM, STEM, uh, and humes and other tracks in school like tech voc or the technical vocational students can make a choice if they will take the college examinations for which they enter college or university or find work after they graduate on senior high school so kanang other types of schools are on the country include private schools preparatory schools international international schools laboratory high schools and science high schools of these schools Private Catholic schools are the most famous. Catholic schools are preferred in the Philippines due to their religious beliefs. Most Catholic schools are co-ed. The, the uniforms of Catholic schools usually have an emblem along with the school colors. The school year in the, the, school year in the Philippines starts June and ends in March with a two-month summer break from April to May. Two weeks semester break in October and Christmas and New Year holidays. So, sports. What is sports? So, sports is a physical activity which, through casual or casual, a organized participation. It also it can improve physical fitness and mental well-being. So, speaking of sports, we have the example of sports. The basketball, boxing, football, billiards, chess, ten pin bowling, volleyball, horse racing, sipak takraw, and cock fighting. <coughs> so among this, among these sports, popular sports, we have arnis, arnis that originated in the Philippines. It's also known as Kali or Eskrima or Eskrima is the national martial art of the martial art of the Philippines. It emphasizes weapon based fighting. Can be traced back to native pentados or then tentados fighting techniques during conflicts among various pre Hispanic Filipino tribes or kingdoms. <coughs> it was developed by indigenous populations of the Philippines. Is used for combat and self defense and is founded by Remy Amador Presa. <coughs> so, speaking of sports, we have the sports, sports stars. It's in boxing, football, basketball, billiards, 10 pin bowling, chess, and MMA.
And the Philippine national basketball team is a powerhouse in Asia and has the best performance of all Asian teams in the Olympics and the FIBA World Cup. So, Palarong Pambansa. <coughs> Palarong Pambansa is a national sports festival and has its origin in an annual event, an annual sporting meet of public schools that started in 1948. Private schools and universities eventually joined the <coughs> national event, which became known as the Palarong Pambansa in 1976 so it serves as a national olympic games for students compete competing at school and national level contest the year 2000 2002 event included football golf archery badminton baseball chess gymnastics tennis softball swimming table tennis, taekwondo, track and field, and volleyball. <coughs> Next is traditional Filipino games. <coughs> traditional Fili Filipino games are indigenous games in the Philippines, or in Tagalog, Laro ng Lahi. <coughs> These are the games that have been played across multiple generations, usually using native materials or instruments. Examples are Luxong Tinik. Luxong Tinik is a popular game. Popular game to Filipino children where one has to jump <coughs> over the tinik and cross to the other side and scatter. Next is Tong Its. Tong Its is a popular gambling game. <coughs> gambling game. Individuals play the game by trying to get rid of all the cards by choosing poker hand wisely. Mm -hmm. Next next is Sungka. Sungka is played on a board game using small seashells in which players try to take all shells. <coughs> the winner the winner is determined by who has the most shells at the point when all Pits became em empty. Next is Salagubang. <coughs> Next is Salagubang Gong. Is a toy described by Charles Burgess, an American entomologist, entomologist who traveled to Negros and discovered a toy, a toy using beetle. Is is used by the the toy using beetles <coughs> to create a periodic gong effect on a kerosene can as the beetle as the beetle rotates above the contraption the next is pico pico is a philippine version of game game hop scotch Children will draw a sequence rectangle using a chalk on the ground. <coughs> With various levels of obstacle in each rectangle, <coughs> children will compete against one another or in a team. Players use pamato, usually a flat stone, flipper, or anything that could be tossed easily. <coughs> Next is the indigenous group. <coughs> the picture shown is an, an Evitan, Evitan woman in Batanes. In 1990, more than 100 Highland peoples constituted approximately 3% of the Philippines, Philippine population. The Highland people are a primitive ethnic group like other Filipinos. These people displayed a variety of native and cultural expression and artistic. They showed a high degree of creativity such as bowls, 
baskets and clothing, weapons, and spoons. These people range from various groups of Igorot people, includes Buntok, Ibal Ibaloy, Ifugao, Isnig, Kalinga, and Kankana A. Other indigenous people include Lumad. Lumad are people of the islands of Mindanao. They have remained isolated from Western and Eastern influences. <clears throat> Next is indigenous religions or shamanism. So due to the influx of Christianity, Islam and other world religions in traditional communities the indigenous practices, rituals, and spiritual performances and knowledge of indigenous, indigenous Filipino are fast disappearing. So, cultural workers in a country suggest the Paiwan model. Paiwan model is made by the Taiwanese government. It is <coughs> it's used to preserve indigenous religions. The indigenous practices and shamanism of the Paiwan people of Taiwan was the fastest decli declining religion in the country. So, uh, next is intang intangible cultural heritage. The Philippines with the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. The Arts as the de facto Ministry of Culture ratified the 2003 Convention. 2003 convention convention after its formal deposit in August 2006. This implies that there is an obligation to carry out the objectives of the convention to ensure the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage. This includes identifying and documenting Viable ICH elements, safeguarding and promoting viable ICH, fostering scientific, technical, and artistic studies, and provide technical assistance and training in the field of ICH. So prior to the 2003 convention, the Philippines was invited by UNESCO to nominate intangible heritage elements for the inclusion to the to the of masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity. This prompted the proclamation of the Hudhud chant of the Ifugao in 2001 and the Rangan epic chant of Maranao in 2005. <clears throat> After the establishment of the 2003 convention, all entries to the proclamation of masterpieces were incorporated in the in the representative list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity in 2008. A third inscription was made in 2015 through a multinational nomination between Cambodia, the Philippines, the Republic of Korea, and Vietnam for the Tuging rituals and games, were in Punuk. A, is a talking ritual of Ifugao was included. <clears throat> As part of the objective of the 2003 convention, the National Commission for Culture and Arts through the Intangible Cultura, Cultural Heritage Unit and in partnership with ICH CAP published the Pinagmulan. In the in 2014, the Pinagmulan was a finalist under the category of the Elfren of the Elfren S. Cruz for the best book in the Social Sciences in the National Book Awards, organized by the National Book Development Board. <clears throat> The Philippines inventory in, is currently being updated as a measure 
to safeguard more intangible cultural heritage elements in the country. The updating began in 2013 and results may be released in 5 to 10 years after the scientific process finishes the second batch of element documentation. <clears throat> According to UNESCO, it is not expected by a country or state party to have a completed inventory. <clears throat> On the contrary, the development and updating of inventories is an ongoing process that can never be finished. Between, between 2015 and 2017, UNESCO's Intangible Cultural Heritage, Courier of Asia, and the Pacific featured the, Darang, the Darangin Epic Chant, Punok Toging Ritual, and at least three kinds of traditional healing practices in the Philippines, including the Manghihilot and Albulario healing practices and belief of Buhay na Tubig, or living water of the Tagalog people of 20th century Quezon City. The Baglan and Mandawak <coughs> healing practices and stone beliefs of ethnic people in Abra, and the Mantatawak healing practices of the Tagalog people of Marandu, Maranduque, Marinduque. <clears throat> By 2016, according to the ICH unit, National Commission for Culture and Arts, there was 300, 336 elements listed under the Philippine Inventory of Intangible Cultural Heritage, PIICH, the official ICH Inventory of the Philippines. In April 2018, the booklog of the Tubanin people was nominated by the National Commission for Culture and Arts in the list of urgent safeguarding. So history of Cebu. Cebu is a province in the Philippines consisting of the Cebu Island and many other surrounding islands. Its name derivation has many alternative interpretation, but according to history, it was derived from the word Cebu, which means straight. Sa panahon sa pagharing ni Raha Humabon, ang isla ni Himo ng importante nga sentro sa pamatigayon diin ang nagkanilaing mga produkto, gibaylo sama sa mga produkto sa agrikultura, mahal nga mga bato, pahumot o guban pa. Trading nga sa ulahi gipamubo sa Cebu o Cebu, diingikan ang modernong ngalan nga Cebu. Nailahan kini ang usaka baryo sa pangisda sa wala pa moabot ang mga Kastila apan ni Himong industrialisado sa daghang mga tuig. Usa na kini sa labing ugmad nga mga lalawigan sa Pilipinas diin ang dakbayan sa Cebu mao ay sentro sa komersyo ug industriya. So in addition sa kang gisulti ni Christine, so Cebu City, the capital of Cebu is considered to be the <coughs> oldest city in the Philippines. It is also known as the oldest settlement established by the Spaniard, Spaniards in the country. So Found in the islands are rich, I, rich traces of the Philippine history left by most, mostly the Spaniards. Among these historical sites are the Magellan's Cross, found in the downtown Cebu, a Christian cross plant planted by the Portuguese and Spanish explorer as ordered by Ferdinand Magellan upon arriving on Cebu on April 15, 2021. So, through the years, Cebu became more and more industrial. Industrial, the rise of big companies, the trend of technology, and the innovation by the people make Cebu very progressive. So Cebu is now the home for many BPOs and small to be very large companies that contribute to the progression of the whole islands, especially Cebu City. So today, when when one speaks of Cebu, it means Relaxation, relaxation, pleasure, and fun. All in one island. For, for in Cebu, everything is at stake. Beautiful resorts, luxury and budget hotels, breathtaking mountains, amazing fun activities, and a lot of more. So, so in addition, it was Miguel Lopez, Lopez de Ligaspe who changed the name to Cebu. Before the Spanish colonization, Cebu has been called Sugo by the indigenous people for a long time. 
However, when a Spanish conquistador, Miguel Lopez de Legazpe, arrived and colonized the city in 1565, he changed the name to Cebu. So that would be all. Thank you.